and then we have string methods. So there are number of string methods using which we can perform like string uh, oper method. Like we can alter the strings uh, position. Okay, strings state. Okay. Uh, just remember, I said strings are immutable. We won't be able to change string. Okay, but we can perform method like operations on string. We can we can perform any sort of operation, but it won't alter the actual string. Okay, actual string. Let me uh, show it practically. So in our case, I'm having ht of seven. What is ht of seven here? ht of seven is i, right? Now I'm willing to change uh, ht of seven from small uh, capital I to small i or v, okay? I wanted to change i with v. And if I try to do this, Python will uh, throw error saying that string object does not support item assignment. The reason being we have initialized the string, but we won't be able to alter the string in the same memory location. We can't perform any sort of thing here, okay, in this string. That's the reason strings are immutable. Now coming to methods, we have a lot of methods, okay? Before that, let me clarify. You might get confused in this aspect, okay? ht dot upper. This upper is the method, okay, which is available with us, okay? And uh, first string, what this will be doing, this will convert each and every character to capital in our string. By performing ht.upper, you can see all the characters converted into capital. So string is immutable, but we are performing some operation. But we are not trying to make any changes to this object, okay? We are just performing this. And this, this will be uh, like a holded in some other place, okay? Idea of just let me try to access this id now and let me try to access this id so if you see here okay uh this string is stored this ht variable is pointed to this memory location okay and ht dot upper this is kind of sitting in different memory location the reason being this is we are just performing some sort of uh, transformation on this, but we are not kind of uh, transforming the actual string which we have initialized. We won't be able to do that. Now I can assign it to some other variable if needed. ht upper is equal to ht dot upper. Okay. Now this will convert string into capital and it will assign this uh, to ht upper variable, which will be sitting in different memory location. This is the concept of immutability. Immutable objects, we won't be able to make any changes to the object, but we can perform some actions and the result we can assign into different variables. Okay. Same thing. Now, uh, let's say we are, uh, we have this ht, right? One more uh, example for immutability. Now I am planning to uh, strip off this string. Okay. Uh, strip off this string and uh, uh, assign it. Okay. Uh, what is the position of F here? Sorry. Uh, no, no. It's uh, brackets. I have used incorrect uh, flower brackets over there. So ST is at position seventeen, right? Okay. What I'm trying to do is same thing again here. I'm trying to start from 17th position to the end and I am wanted to remove that first string and I am planning to do this to second string. Like I'm just planning to access that and change it to st second string, okay? To see that this will throw error because we won't be able to do that by perform that operation, okay? So, but we can do what we can do over here is we can go up till 17th position, which will be I am your first underscore this thing, right? And place second string, okay? Hello, I am your second string. So if you carefully observe, we're accessing some part of string and we are appending it to desired, uh, our desired string. 
and this will be kind of sitting in different memory location. So this is the uh, concept of immutability. We won't be able to perform any sort of changes to the immutable uh, data types. And coming to the string methods, as you see, we have already covered upper. So if you kind of uh, wanted to try, just initialize the string in your uh, collab notebook and you can try it out each and every method. Okay. So same lawyer, as name suggests, it will convert everything to lawyer, whichever is available, like all the text into a uh, lower case. And then you have capitalize, right? So in capitalize, it will convert first letter of the string into capital. If you see here, we have this Python class, right? Here we have Y caps. And if I am performing ht dot capitalize, it will convert it into okay. I think I have this point. Okay. It will convert it into Python class. If you remember, if you observe here, this way also converted to uh, this uh, smaller lower case. The reason being capitalize, it will just capitalize the first letter of the string always. And then we have case fold. Case fold is very similar to pretty much similar to lower, lower method. But case for it is kind of bit advanced and it's more aggressive in the sense we'll be having some uh, literals like Greek and Roman Roman literals, right? Those sort of things lower won't be performing any operations on that. But case for it will actually convert those other uh, Greek and uh, Roman literals as well into a uh, small letters, okay? Uh, whereas lower it will only convert our English alphabets into lower or upper, right? Case void also will do same thing, but we'll rarely use case void. We'll almost like most of the time we'll go with upper and lower only. We won't uh, go to this case void. Same thing, title. So what title basically will do is uh, it will make all the words into title or case or camel case. Camel case is nothing but first letter of the word, word should be in capital and length of the string. Okay. So uh, LEN of string will provide us the length, okay? Length of the string, okay? And then we have strip method. Strip method is nothing but it will strip, it will strip the characters in the first and last, okay? By default, if we are just performing strip over here, what this will be doing is this will consider space as the character. It will check if there are any spaces available in the beginning and end of the string. And it will just strip them off. If you observe this here, okay, we have this Python class, and we have two spaces. We have space over here and space over here. When I'm performing strip st dot strip on this, it will just remove the spaces from end and beginning. That is normal strip. If we want to remove spaces only in the beginning, not at the end, then we can use l strip. L strip is nothing but left strip. It will strip down uh, spaces or other characters on the left side of the strip. Same with R strip. It will uh, strip the spaces on the right side, not on the left side. If you observe the output here, here we have uh, it stripped down the first uh, spaces, like left side spaces, but it haven't done anything to these spaces. In case of R strip, it will uh, strip down the right spaces and you, it won't do anything for the left uh, spaces. So okay. let's uh, practically do this. We have this string with us, right? ST dot. If you are not sure about methods, you can just give dot. And if in this Jupyter and PyCharm and PyPy, like uh, this code app, it will bring up all the methods available to this, okay? Uh, you, when I type a dot, I'm able to access each and every method over here. I just need to call it on the string. So it's capitalizes it. And then I can just type tab over here. Okay, ht dot. If you see, these are all the methods with, which are starting, starting with C. We have covered the case word and we have covered capitalize. And then we have lawyer method, right? ht dot lawyer will convert everything to lawyer. And the state dot upper will convert everything to upper. Yeah, ST dot title. We have like center those things. We have next slide. I'll be explaining that as well. ST dot title, we convert 
this is like all the words available to title or case, which is camel case. OK, you can try it out all like you can try out each and every method available here in your uh, Python IDE or Jupyter notebook and just uh, like understand what's happening over here. And this we have this strip, right? Strip we have seen only with uh, spaces. Now let's say I'm kind of uh, uh, adding some uh, symbols over here, special symbols over here. Okay. So this is my string now. If I perform strip on this part, uh, this string, this will be giving me the same string. The reason being, by default, it will consider space as the character using which it, it needs to strip the uh, this uh, string. Okay, now, if I am giving the actual dollar, because I need to remove that remove that dollar from there, right? So if I am doing that using dollar symbol over here, what it will do? If it encounters any dollars in the beginning and end of the string, it will just strip them. First, it will strip the first one, and again it will check. Then again we have this dollar, right? As far as the uh, string uh, is not starting with dollar, it will keep on stripping them. And then I can do same thing using the else strip. Else strip is nothing but rough strip, right? So in rough strip, we are checking only the beginning of the string, and that is left of the string for the particular characters. And if it encounters them, it will just strip them off. Same happens with R strip. It will just strip the right side of the string, but it won't uh, affect the left side of the this thing because there there may be cases where we might need those sort of information. Let's say we have this uh, uh, money available with us, which will be like. Three forty-five dollars. So in this case, if we are performing strip, then we are losing out this in currency information. Dollar is currency. We don't need to lose that information. But then we need to make sure if it is being uh, uh, dollar is being coming in the start of the string, then it should kind of strip it. So in these sort of cases, we can just use the else strip. So what this will be doing, this will just check for the left side of the string and it was uh, OK. I need to specify the character as well here. We'll only check the left part of the string, OK, in this case. And then string methods, we have uh, this center as it was. So what center will do? It will center line the string, okay, by filling spaces or special characters, any special character. I, I'll explain what this is. Okay, let's say we have one string which is uh, we have this Python with us, okay, and I'm performing center st dot center of. I need to center it uh, such that length of the string should be ten. Okay, whole string should be 10 and Python should appear in the center. And I am doing this uh, center of 10 and I am filling out this with uh, hashes. Okay. If you see here what this thing, we have this uh, Python, right, which is containing six characters in this. Okay. And then it has uh, inserted two hashes in the beginning and two hashes in the end. So basically it's kind of centering it. If I am. If I need 20 strings over here, like string length of 20 and Python should be in the very center. You can perform this thing. Test dot center of 20 and hash. It will keep the Python in the very center and uh, left and right positions. It will insert this value. OK, this is kind of padding basically. It will pad it with the, the things which we have mentioned. It may be uh, characters or it may be spaces or it may be zeros. OK. And then count. So count of s, what it will do, it will count number of occurrences of a character. Let's say in our case, we are doing count of s. So we're trying to count how many times s is present in our string. So you can just uh, do this, uh, do that using count method and it will give us two. Since S is present two times in string, it will output a two as the uh, result. Then we have starts with, okay? 
if you see here uh, starts with what this will check this will check if the string is starting with particular character or word okay so just a while ago we have checked we have seen this example right like we need to identify all the names where we have arun in the string okay in this case we need to identify all the names whose uh, names are starting with letter m with letter m so we can accomplish this using this method like st dot starts with of p okay so we are checking if string is starting with p since it is starting with p it will give us true okay further we can make use of this true or false to control the behavior of our program let's say in our case i need to find only names whose like who students whose names are starting with letter m in that case what i can do i can do name dot start with of m and if that is evaluating to true if the condition is true then i'll be taking that name and i'll be storing it somewhere if condition is false then i'll be doing nothing so we can use this uh, like when we are we can use this in combination with the flow control statements for performing different types of operations okay and then uh, we have one more thing not only character we can check if string is starting with some particular word actually so in this case we have st dot starts with of python so uh, can you guys guess what will be the result whether it will be true or false in this case true what, what will be the result in this case anyone anyone from online as well okay what will be the result of this particular statement will it be true or will it be false anyone just guess no harm in guessing right you can just guess whether it's true or not guru rakesh or krishna varshita shivara anyone like you can just guess right whether it's true or false true sir true sir okay that's fine uh, so ideally uh, let's execute this in our uh, uh, console okay we have what is the string here python class and y is capital right python class and what we can do is st dot starts with with of p it will evolve it to true as i said and i am now doing python right as we said it's evaluating it to false again the reason being python is strictly case sensitive here we have python and here we have python both are completely different the reason being we have different case here in this just pay attention to this okay because these are the tiny things which uh, like you will be facing in your uh, exams like interviews and uh, like uh, exams so you just overlook these simple aspects okay just try to uh, pay attention to them okay and then same ends with ends with using ends with we can check uh, if a string is ending with uh, particular letter or word we will consider same our name uh, this thing okay uh, names uh, use case and i need to check how many students names are ending with a sing okay i need to identify all the students whose names are ending with sing so what i can do i can just do name dot ends with of i can just do sing over there okay sing over there so when you are performing those sort of operations in your applications or this thing the best practice is to convert it into lower case okay in this case we are expecting true from this but we are getting false the reason being the case is inconsistent so in these sort of cases what you can do is this is the best practice okay whichever string operations you are performing and whichever string comparison operations you are performing uh, just remember this uh, because you might encounter these sort of use cases when you are actually working on application so because you can't predict if we are getting it as a input from different user or different source you can't expect the case in which we are receiving and we are strictly expecting this python over here 
then what we can do is you can just convert it into lower case. It will just completely lower this. And then you can check your condition, like whether the Python is present or not. OK. Now it will evolve to true. The reason being this st.lower has already converted our string from this to completely lower case. And on the converted string, we are checking if it is uh, starting with uh, Python or not. Same thing I can check with ends with, OK? In ends with, I am giving Yes, OK, LASS. And it will check if the string is ending with LASS and it will return true or false based on that, OK? When performing this uh, flow control statements and uh, of looping statements, I'll be explaining more about this, how we can actually use them in our applications using those uh, conditionals and uh, uh, looping statements, OK? And then we have replace. So there may be cases where we might want to replace one word with other. If we encounter one word, we might need to replace it with other. Let's say we are having one uh, education platform where we are not wishing to include their surnames, basically. We don't want any sort of surname. Reddy, Naidu, Chaudhary sort of things. We are just wanted to normalize the name so that they'll be having only their name, nothing else, like no sort of uh, their surname. So in that case, in sort in those sort of cases, what you can do is you can just perform replace operation. So since we don't want anything, you can just type HTRS replace of red day with empty string. Okay, we can try it out practically over here. Okay. Let's say uh we have this Maheshwar Reddy over here, and I am trying to but in my education platform, when I'm performing, like when I'm inserting these records into database, I don't want any sort of surnames for, for me over there. What I can do is I can just do name dot. We can perform any many sort of operations over here. This is one thing, OK? One typical use case where you can uh, uh, perform this, OK? I'm just trying to replace ready with empty string. Okay. OK, now ready has been removed and you have only Maheshwar and space. So this comes by practice. Now I don't want that space as well. I can just perform strip operation over here. But you will just strip it down. OK. Only ready on the Only ready on multiple ways. So Miru Maheshwar and Nikara. Maheshwar and TCC, you can just have this as uh, empty strip. And you have you are stripping out spaces, extra spaces. Now you get only ready. So you can perform this in many ways. Okay. You can kind of uh, uh, name dot R strip. I am performing R stripping over here. And I need to strip out this part, space and ready part over here. Okay. And you can find only my. So there are a lot of ways doing this is. Replace is just one case of that. Why you can like the use case where you can employ this replace of the string. So in our case, I'm replacing this py with cy. Now this Python will become Cython. OK. Now Cython is nothing but Python's implementation of C. Don't think it as normal uh, as Cython. Cython is we have actually Cython in Python. That is uh, uh, like Python C was implemented in Python using this Cython. OK. And then we have find, OK? So find method will find the location of character. Just uh, remember location is nothing but index position. So find will find the index position of a character. In the string. Let's say uh, we have this uh, name with us, right? I am trying to find. Where I am encountering the R in this. Uh, string and it is giving me seventh position starting from even though we have other r's here it won't give because find will return the very first occurrence of this character okay wherever it is encountering the character in character in the first place it will provide us the index position of that particular uh, location if if there are any other r's after this it won't be able to give us that because it will just on the first encounter, it will provide us the location. It will just terminate over there. 
for finding these sort of things, we have more complex string uh, comparison uh, like operations using regular expressions. We'll cover a lot of these string comparison things in regular expressions. OK. And then we have split. Sorry, it's uh, some uh, mistake over here. Split is the method actually. What split will do? Split, we have strip, right? Strip will be stripping of things. What split will do? Split will be uh, splitting things into different, uh, like different words, okay? Uh, using the separator. Okay, when we are performing split of uh, separator, Python will be separating the strings using that particular separator which we have given, and it will uh, store them as a list of words, okay? Let me, let's try this out practically. Now, ST is. We have this. This is Python programming class, right? This is my string. If I'm performing ST.split, what this will be doing is this will split string using the spaces. We are not passing anything over here, right? So it will consider. Uh, No, let me try it out. Okay. You see, this is considering uh, space as the separator. If you are not passing anything to split, and it will split hold the string uh, using spaces. Wherever we have space, it will just separate out that particular part and it will store it as a word. Again, E is comma. It is storing it as a word. And then we have Python stored as a word and programming. So, by default, it will consider space as the separator. OK, we can also mention separator specifically over here. We can explicitly mention the separator. Now I will mention comma as the separator for my splitting. So just guess what will be the output for this? Any idea what what else, what will be getting using this ht dot split of comma? Any guesses anyone? Just a guess, like we have seen this the comma, first thing. Sorry, is come this comma is comma Python comma. Maybe it's come like that. Okay, yeah, good try. Okay, now let's actually execute execute this. If you see, this is comma and Python programming class. So this is kind of splitting it into two different words. One word is this is, and second word is. Python programming class. The reason being split of comma. We are trying to separate this string using this comma as a separator. Here we have only one comma available in our string. OK, so after this comma, like all the words available before comma will be treated as one word. And uh, after comma, part of string will be treated as another word. OK. Now, if I'm including some more commas over here, and if I'm performing same thing, now as you see, like for each and every comma it's encountering, it will be splitting the string. In before case, we have only comma here, hence we got output as this is into one part and Python programming class into other part. Here I have three commas in three different locations, and if you see, this is uh, being considered as one word. Python will be splitted as uh, one word, programming as one word. And if you observe two commas here, between two commas, we have three splits will be happening, Python, programming, and class. OK, you can have any sort of character here. We can have hash, and if you perform it using uh, splitting using hash, it will only consider hash character, and it will ignore the commas and spaces. You see, this is will be the first word, and Python programming class will be the second word. All this thing will be treated as a single word, Python, comma, programming, comma, class. OK. Any doubts? So far, any doubts for anyone? Do you have any doubts regarding any methods so that we can revisit them? So this okay. Python from here, right? You have any queries or any doubts? Just uh, like raise your hand or just uh, let us know so that we can revisit them. So far, good, right? You're able to follow things. Yeah. OK. Now, then we have this some uh, methods, which are is alpha, is digit, is all now. 
there are many these sort of this is alpha is digit is numeric there are many operations but these are the mostly used one okay there are numeric kind of other things which are big complex we don't need them so you can just uh, uh, keep in mind these three methods so what is alpha will do is is alpha will check if the string is having only alphabets if string contains only letters then is alpha method will return true if it contains any like numbers apart from letters is alpha will return false same with is digit is digit will do uh, will check if string contains only digits or numbers same with is all num what is all num will be doing it will check if string is containing both alphabets and numbers it will check for both conditions. If string is containing alphabets and numbers, then is all num will provide us the uh, result as true. Yes, it will give false. Let's try it out practically. And the primary, like mostly why we'll be using these sort of things is we have seen this type conversion. When we are accepting something from user, let's say number. Um, input of this enter a number okay this input is one different one which will be covering in the io operations python input output operations just uh, remember that what input will do it will accept input from user okay and after taking input what i am doing is I'm converting it into number, OK? It may be some uh, integer or float. I'm just converting it into floating point, OK? Floating point. This is being used in the middle of my application, OK? This particular code snippet, which I am typing now, this is being used in the middle of my application, OK? And then I'm printing out converted one, OK? What this code will be doing is, this will take input from the user. OK. And I am entering some input as 786. What this will do, this will take 786 input from user. User should enter this 786. It will take that number like input and it will assign it to number. And then it will convert this number into floating point. It will convert this 786 into floating point. And it will just print the result of the conversion. After entering number, just press enter. You see, this is the converted number. We have entered 786 and 786 is converted into floating point. So I am trying it out again. OK, and I am entering 786 again and by mistake, I have entered some letter, uh, some Y or some letter over here, and I am hitting enter. So if you see, we are Python will run into error. Our program is running into error, saying that could not convert string to float. Okay, could not convert string to float. So this is not the desirable functionality which we are expecting from our program because program shouldn't encounter any sort of these things. So for handling those sort of conditions, we can make use of these things. OK, uh, is alpha, is number, uh, this thing. So here we are expecting this to be a digit. OK, the input to be a digit. And before conversion, what I am doing while number dot is digit, OK? Don't panic with the fancy stuff here. So we will be covering all these uh, loopings and uh, conditional statements. OK, I'm just uh, trying to uh, tell you the uses of that when you can use those sort of things. OK. Now what I am doing is here. I am entering 786Y again, which is incorrect one. OK. If you see here, OK, number, OK. Yeah, well, it's a uh, well number dot is digit. One minute, I just give me. Uh, well, it is false, right? Okay, I think it won't accept multiple these things. Okay, we can go with the number over here if condition over here. 
if number dot is digit. Here it will evaluate number dot is digit. It will check whether it's true or false. Okay, if it is true, then it will convert it. Else, it will just return. So in this case, uh, my bad. Uh, since uh, this uh, not terminal, the input won't be kind of working the way we are expecting. So now if I'm giving 786Y again, OK, you can check that. Uh, this is not going inside this loop. The reason being it is evaluating number dot is digit. And since we are entering some Y over here, this is no more a digit. There, there is some alphabets as well in the string. So this condition will become false and it will go into this else loop and it will just uh, uh, print this message. So when using our applications, OK, you can just use try. Again, this is one uh, sort of uh, exception handling thing which we'll be covering in detail, OK? So we can make use of these things, try and accept, OK? and what try method will do? Try will check. It will just try if number being entered is uh, correct or not. Okay. Uh, if number is digit, then it will just convert and print it. If number is not correct, then what it will do now? It will just print this message and again it will ask for action over there. Okay. It will again ask for action over there. Okay. Then I'm. OK, I, we don't have that uh, condition over here. So now I'm typing 786 and the converted value will be 786.0, which will be displayed to the console. OK, and then I have again 786.ui something. OK, OK, yeah, UI. If you see here, it will throw us please enter only numeric values. The reason being it is catching that exception. We'll speak more about exceptions uh, going forward and it will ask only for number. OK, and if you enter only number here. Then it will kind of go back. OK, it won't throw up an error. We can perform again these things over here in Excel. We can accept the input again and we can check for this condition. So. So this is the basic use case which where we can employ this. Uh, uh, what we say uh, is alpha is num is digit. Let's say we have this hk is equal to adb123. Okay. And I am trying to check if it contains both. Uh, I'm just checking if it contains both alphabets and numbers. Okay. There may be cases where we have some pin codes or vehicle numbers. Okay. We need to evaluate them. So in that case, uh, if we consider our vehicle numbers, we'll be having state code and then registration code and then the reason code and then the actual number. So it's mix of both numbers and digits. So for evaluating such uh, things, we'll be using. Anyways, those will be evaluated using more uh, stringent uh, comparison rules like uh, regular expressions. Uh, but I'm just uh, trying to highlight the uses, the basic uses of this uh, uh, is alpha is number and uh, other uh, methods. Okay. And then we have format dot format dot format will be using it to format our strings. OK, we can format it in any way we want. Let's say. We have this string with us, OK, and this is. This is my. First Python. Okay. Programming in Hyderabad, OK. This is the string which I have with me. OK, now if I am printing this, I'll be getting this. No, no, not true. This is my first Python programming in Hyderabad. I'm getting this. OK, we can kind of format it using different ways. Let's say we'll be uh, taking. Inputs from user. OK, sorry, let it be. A is equal to input of enter your name. Okay. This is equal to input of 
enter your place okay or city so what i am doing here i am taking two inputs from user one will be name and one will be city so based on this i need to print uh i need to customize my string so that this what this will do is uh this is let's say i will be modifying this this is this is mahesh and i am mahesh okay i am mahesh i am mahesh and this is my first python programming in hyderabad okay let's say this will be the welcome message which will be providing to all our users based on their name and their place okay and if i am uh, doing this one uh, it will print i am mahesh and this is my first python programming in hyderabad okay if some other user comes and he runs that again this will be printing same thing like i am mahesh and this is my first python programming so based on each user's names we can keep on creating strings right so for doing this sort of operations we can perform string formatting basically so i am taking up the same string over here and i am entering it here okay and let's say we don't want this mahesh part over here okay and we don't want this city part we need to make it dynamic in the sense we don't we we are not keeping it constant based on the user's name and place will be uh, dynamically giving him the custom message based on his name and place so we can do that using format in format i can give name comma place so what this will be doing now the format will this format keyword it will print format the string in such a way that it will insert these uh, variable names in any place if it encounters any flower brackets just remember this curly braces okay in string if it is encountering any curly braces the format function will replace the curly brace with variable okay in our case let's say i am executing this enter your name let's say we have arun here and uh, his place he is a uh, kind of attending it from bangalore okay and string is okay i need to enter this print also right print of ht now i'm entering it again we have arun here and uh, he is attending the class from bangalore and i need to print a custom message to him if you see now i'm getting i am arun and this is my first python programming in bangalore if you observe these curly braces are being replaced by these variables which we are going giving over here okay and let's say we have accidentally made this place and name okay name over here so in this case what we can do is we can specify the order over here so okay sorry uh, okay place and name we can specify the order over here so if i am giving one over here and uh, zero over here okay i am again entering arun and then i have places bangalore okay if you see this i am arun and this is my first i'll be getting same output again the reason being in within format we are providing sequence of variables okay and these are having index positions like 0 and 1 so in our format at index position 0 we have place and at index position 1 we have name if you observe this within this curly braces i am specifying the index here we are i am specifying 0 and here i am specifying 1 so this indicates that by format function should format string in such a way that here i should get first uh, index position variable which is name and here i should get second index position variable which is uh, place okay this is one sort of formatting the string there is one more string formatting which i forgot to include in slide okay and uh, just stop it over here okay and we can just use f keyword in the beginning of the string okay instead of doing this we can just use f keyword over here and using f keyword 
the format will be same. Like we'll be having curly braces, and wherever F keyword encounters curly braces, it will try to replace it with a variable. So in case of F keyword, we'll be kind of giving the actual variable names over here. Okay. This is the actual variable name which we are giving f of I am name and this is my first Python programming. Now, if I'm executing this again, we'll be getting essentially same like I am Banu and I'm attending it from Hyderabad. You see, I am Banu and this is my first programming for Python programming in Hyderabad. So we have two things. One is dot format, which we can use at end and we'll be placing all our variables within our format method. One more is F string. We just need to use F in front of the string and you can directly give our variable names in the curly braces. Okay, we have some string or like a print formatting methods also using F string, which I'll be explaining in the further sessions. And then we have string concatenation. Concatenation is nothing but joining. Concatenation is uh, like nothing but uh, joining in programming terms. Okay, uh, we are kind of just joining uh, two different strings or same string with another. Okay, if you can see like in the previous examples, I am kind of here uh, somewhere. We have performed this uh, indexing, right? Like I have taken some part of the string and I have used this operator to do that. So in this case, let's say we have this, right? I can give. This place is place my place okay. What this will be doing is this will just join each and every character, each and every character. So uh since we haven't given any space over here, it will just uh, skip adding space. It will just clump them into single uh, string. OK, now if I type it again, we'll get our desired thing, which will be the this is my first program with uh, spaces. So you can perform any sort of arithmetic operations on strings. OK, let's say I have this here, right? Yes, let me think this uh, this is my first program. And I can perform into two. What this will be doing basically, it will just multiply it twice and it will provide us the same string two times. Same thing. If I'm giving into three, it will give it three times. Okay. And I can also perform uh, this uh, same thing. If I go with uh, plus two, uh, can you guess what will be the output for this? Two times. Four times. This is my first program plus two. Three times. Any guesses? It will guys who are in meeting. Any uh, guesses? At the end, it will get two or that's it. Okay. So basically, this will throw up an error. The reason being, this plus is addition operation, as you know, and we are trying to add integer two with string two. We can't perform this addition between integers and strings, right? Just remember that, okay? Uh, addition and uh, subtraction won't be compatible with this uh, uh, string. If you are having a string over here again within two, then this will just do as you said, it will this will just happen two at the end of the string, okay? Just be careful with these sort of operations. You can only kind of use this for printing uh, purpose. We can use this into operation over here. Okay. Which will kind of basically multiply and we can perform addition between two strings. Okay. Those are string concatenation methods. Okay. I think this is uh, pretty much for today's uh, session where we have covered operators and strings. Okay. So if you have any sort of doubts regarding strings uh, data type in Python, like which we have just covered, just feel free to ask so that we can close our uh, today's session. There are any sort of questions. If you want me to revisit any other concepts which we have covered so far, just let me know. I can kind of explain it again. Guys, any doubts? No. If you are okay, 
then today we have one more assignment for us. Okay, I'm just uh, let me discarding them. So this will be our assignment for today's class. Okay, so here what we are doing is uh, let me quickly explain the assignment. We need to create a string with the name as sample string. And the content of the string should be welcome to Python programming tutorial. OK, the first thing you need to do is find the length of the sample string which you have created. And you need to print it, of course. And then we need to replace tutorial with lecture. OK, we need to replace what tutorial with lecture. And then we need to find number of character number of times character O is present. We need to just count how many times letter O is present in the string. And then we need to print only Python programming from this string. OK, we have this string with us. We need to print only Python programming from this string. OK. Just observe uh, like what is the question over here? We need to print only Python programming from this string. Then convert the whole sentence into lowercase. And then split the given sentence so that we'll be getting the below output. OK, we just need to split it so that we'll be getting below output. OK. So. Uh, this is the basically simple assignment, but you can play with all the types which I have shown like you can just uh, do hands on with all the available string methods and you can kind of uh, go through each and every method how it's working and what it's doing on string. OK. So this will be the assignment I'll be 